Good evening. I'd like to call this uh, May 18th, 2020 board meeting to order. Mr. Roberts, you please call roll. Mr. Butler? Here. Mr. Kruger? Present. Mr. Metzler? Here. Mrs. Talley? Here. Mr. Unati? Here. Uh, would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and to the republic for which, for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay. Mr. Sattler, I understand there might be an addition to the agenda that was posted from Friday, correct? That is that is correct. It will go under action G, action item number three, purchasing, and it's a roofing project that just came to us at the end of last week, and we got a quote in it on it today. So we added that to the agenda. Action item number three. Okay. We'll make note of that. I do need approval for the agenda as uh, just altered, please. So moved. Mr. Second. Gennady and Ms. Second. Stout. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roberts, please call the roll. Mr. Gennady? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. All right, motion passes 5-0 for the agenda. We start off this evening with Indian Trail, uh, Principal Eric Riddle. Good evening. You are mute, Mr. Riddle, there I'm, you go. I'm unmuted now, takes a minute. Good evening. Um, thank you, I'm gonna I have a short presentation here. I'm gonna kind of piggyback off of what Mr. Lawlathan did. Uh, a month ago uh, under the circumstances that we've had and uh, kind of highlight a few of the um, um, things uh, that we have going on uh, with our distance learning and uh, some uh, just a couple short videos to show of kids work and, uh, and I think you guys will enjoy it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, Got to present the screen first. Launching. Can you see it okay? Yes. Yes. All right, here we go. Uh, first thing I wanted to share, just we I know uh, Mac shared a lot of this. It's going to be very similar, but uh, we had a distance learning center page that's on the website. Um, we we try to make it as a uh, you know user friendly for the staff, the students, and especially the parents. A couple of the highlights, you know, we have our distance learning page, uh, we have our parent resources, and then we have a, a related art section where the uh, parents could go and click on and. Um, perform some of those uh, related arts uh, activities that they would uh, post each week. So just an idea of what our lesson plan template looked like. Uh, it looks very similar again to Mr. Lawlathan's. We had a principal's message. We had a, uh, my uh, school counselor, Mrs. Henshaw would put um, just a, a couple links on uh, this is from um, uh, Mrs. Primer, Mrs. Westall, Mrs. Law, Mrs. Moore. This is kind of their template of what it looked like. Uh, but more than anything, I want to share uh, uh, a, um, a lesson that they did together. And there was a, uh, the students had to use resources in their home to share a story, which I think you all will enjoy. This is a second grade student. I got to turn my volume up. I apologize. 
And the volume, Mr. Uh, Hoffman and I went through this today. The volume's not the greatest, but if you watch the, uh, the graphics, I think you'll enjoy this. This is a Lego lesson by one of our second grade students. Uh-oh, it's not what we wanted. Once upon a time in the land of Mooney, two aliens named Bob and Dob went looking for some money to eat. All of a sudden, an evil wizard named Jeff appeared. Then he turned and asked, Why are you eating all of my money? Those are magical, but it is too late. They took a bite, and before they knew it, a huge cyclops burst out of the ground, and it fell from the sky. It was So as you can see, there's a lot of creativity there. It was pretty awesome. I know Mr. Roberts really likes that right now. I know. <laughs> uh, but you know, those are the, the kind of um, kind of activities that we try to uh, implement uh, throughout uh, our time in this uh, this this new normal. Uh, one of the other things we wanted to highlight was um, our class dojo. Uh, I think most of you may be aware of it. It's a free web-based communication tool uh, that teachers and administrators use to share educational materials and celebrate students, uh, student accomplishments. Uh, it's been in our building uh, since 2017. So if you look at an example of our weekly school leader email update, uh, you can see that through Class Dojo in one week, we had 2,168 uh, messages sent home, uh, 2,400 uh, stories shared. Uh, and this is parents, this, I'm sorry, this is the teachers in administration on a daily basis that, that we use. And it's a, it's a great tool uh, that we use. And it's also uh, part of our um, positive behavior intervention support system also that we use to highlight those students, you know, that, uh, you know, to earn uh, certain um, positive reinforcements in our building. Now that we're virtually, it's a little bit different but it can still, it's still great, a great communication tool for us at Indian Trail. Uh, again, teachers use uh, Class Dojo to communicate with families, post assignments, collect student work, and even share video lessons. This is uh, from our first grade teacher, Mrs. Fairchild. You can see that she had certain assignments and how many, uh, she was able to tell how many have turned them in. Uh, but what is more important, especially at this time, was she was able to model for the students. If you look at the picture where uh, she was able to explain what to do next and she had little, um, a little note to the parents also to assist them, uh, to um, you know, assist them in understanding what their next steps were and so forth. So it's just, a, it's a great resource for us. Uh, Mrs. Cobb and I use this uh, quite a bit also. We post our weekly announcements. Um, I don't know if anyone uh, on the board uh, saw our dance moves last week, but it was pretty good. Uh, Mrs. Cobb's a little bit better than me, but uh, you know, it's an opportunity also for Mrs. Cobb and I to, to share out to the parents and, and let them know of updates and so forth. We're able to post videos and we're able to, I'm able to interact with the parents and, and do videos so to update them on any changes that are going on. And what's awesome, if you read that last uh, line of the bubble, uh, we have translation available in 10 languages. So a lot of our parents can click on and view, uh, use the translation in order to you know, comprehend what the messages are. Very big asset for us. One of the things I even uh, spoke with Mr. Hoffman today about uh, one of our distance learning blended programs is our Alexia Core 5. Um, during this uh, time period of total of 704 of our students have logged into Alexia from 316 to 518. Uh, if you look at the metrics uh, in graphs below, uh, you can see that uh, kindergarten, we had 186 students. First grade, we had 237 students, and second grade, 251 students. We did have one third grader, and I explained as that's uh, one of our multi handicapped uh, units that we have sometimes uh, uh, students that are a little bit older. But since March 16th, this number kind of blew me away when I was talking to Mrs. Locker, an instructional coach. 92% of our students have been connected with Lexia, 92%. 
and 88% are averaging at least, at least 16, uh, or I'm sorry, 60 minutes a week. So our students are still engaged, our students are still active, and even though we are not in the classroom, they are still uh, participating in some form of learning, which is a huge impact. Serving all students. Uh, you know, when all this uh, took, took place, uh, we had to figure out how to um, accommodate our families that uh, did not have uh, the technology that they needed. Um, with the help of uh, Mrs. Henshaw, my school counselor, Mrs. O'Brien, school psychologist, Mrs. Cobb, the assistant principal, uh, and again, Mrs. Locker, instructional coach, they came up with a Google form. And the results of that survey and phone calls, 25% uh, of our students did not have access to their own technology or did not have internet in their homes or both. Um, so also, I, I, I don't want to leave out uh, JP in the tech department because it, it was a huge collaboration. We acted quickly and two Chromebook distributions for students who had no, no technology. We had 76 Chromebooks uh, di uh, distributed um, and those were mainly for students that didn't have older siblings. Uh, we had our Wi-Fi hotspots uh, called Kajits. Um, which we gave out 12, but JP and I talked today, we're probably closer to 20 at this point since we've done this PowerPoint, but we we're able to at least accommodate our families so that they were able to engage in this new uh, reality that we are in. Something we couldn't forget about is, you know, with, with all the changes, there, there is a uh, social emotional learning, there's social emotional aspect of it. Uh, Mrs. Henshaw, I wanted to share something with you. She would always do a, uh, a video lesson before the students would start their uh, activities for the week. And again, you might be hard to hear it. I'm going to try to turn it up. But, you know, this was a sign to be completed before starting on schoolwork every day. Uh, it's Mrs. Henshaw and uh, Ms. Culpepper, who is an OSU school counseling intern. So I'm just going to share this video. It's only about a minute just of some of the things that she went to to you know, get the kids ready for learning. Hi, Indian Trail students. Thanks so much for joining me again for another mindful moment. Breathe in. I am. Breathe out. We bring our hands up to our head. Quietly say, head, please relax. Now, close your eyes and feel your hand and your arm shaking. Keep your eyes closed and shake your left hand and arm. I hope you guys enjoyed being a tall mountain. I know that now we all know we're all going to be at home for the rest of the school year. So it might feel like our homework is a big mountain, or just the situation is a big mountain to overcome. But we can become that mountain and make sure that we are calm and focused. I hope to see you guys soon. I miss you. And the, the last slide I want to present is um, we also did like a little survey. Uh, again, this is a uh, hats off to Mrs. Henshaw, our uh, school counselor. Uh, we began tracking students' feelings using Google Forms. Uh, the results were shared with teachers. We tracked trends by classroom grade or period of time. Uh, and you can see about, you know, most of our students, 50% of our students were ready to learn. 22% uh, were excited. And the same ones that were excited uh, were tired because we had 31% that were tired too. Uh, but this was, this was just a way to try to meet the needs of our students. And uh, you know, being in a building that's a kindergarten first and second, um, we just wanted to try to also meet the needs of the students' um, social and emotional uh, piece that uh, we were not able to meet um, in a brick and mortar setting. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have questions, you may ask. Um, but uh, overall, I'm very proud of uh, my staff. A lot of hats off to the district as we collaborated to, to meet the needs of, of our students uh, in a crunch. So I just wanted to highlight some of the great things 
that are going on in a short amount of time in, the, in this new uh, reality that we are in. Mr. Riddle, thank you very much. Appreciate the presentation. Board members, do you have any questions or comments uh, for Indian Trail? Um, personally, I just wanted to commend Indian Trail staff and teachers. They have been extraordinarily um, just awesome during this time, providing the support to parents and their students as needed. Um, they're always available to assist with questions and just they're always cheerful and just there ready to help. So I just wanted to commend the staff there at Indian Trail for just doing an awesome job. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anything, anyone else? Again, thank you, uh, Indian Trail, appreciate that. Uh, that information. Thank you. We're going to move to uh, CWEA. Do we have a report from CWEA? We do. Um, I am happy to present their report again this month. And I do want to just make note that Nancy Husky and Nathan Widener are in the audience um, representing CWEA tonight. So we'll start off at Indian Trail. Mrs. Black, Mrs. Waits, Mrs. Hartsook, and Mrs. Rapp's pod is posting activities on Fridays for students to focus on portrait of a graduate standards as they teach about responsible learners, respectable citizens, problem solvers, et cetera. One week, they had to post a picture of family game night as they focused on being great collaborators at home. They also had to submit a video of something they were great at to focus on self-aware individuals. And when thinking about being problem solvers and responsible learners, they were asked to reflect right about their learning and create lists to help them stay organized on track and what to do when they are bored around the house in order to help entertain themselves. I'm, I'm sorry, I lost my uh, notes there. All right, I'm back on track, I apologize for that. Um, they were asked to reflect right about their learning and create lists to help them stay organized on track and what to do when they are bored around the house in order to help entertain themselves and be productive. Parents are loving it and students are posting pictures and videos of the activities on Class Dojo. Mrs. Westall, Mrs. Primer, Mrs. Moore, and Mrs. Laws Pod have been asking students to create their own story problems, videos, and posting them for other students to solve. It's been a great way to take learning that standards to the next level of understanding and mastery. Mrs. Link, Mrs. Lair, Mrs. Dunkel, and Mrs. Spriggs pod had their kids make a 3D structure out of anything that they had around the house. Lots of kids used cans and boxes from the pantry. It was pretty cute and the parents and kids loved it and had really positive things to say. At Winchester Trail, third grade teachers have created a digital memory book for students to complete on Google Slides. Even though distance learning is taking place for us all, they have found a great way to continue to connect with the students and build those relationships digitally. Even though this is an unfortunate situation, there's always something to learn and it's something they are considering doing for years to come. They will have access to their Google Slide third grade memory book for years to come. The middle school was able to sponsor the 11th annual Red Cross Blood Drive, the sixth year in honor and memory of Brock Johnson with the assistance of the city of Canal Winchester by hosting the blood drive at the Canal Winchester Community Center. The drive held Tuesday, May 12th was a huge success, collecting 84 units. Thank you to each and every staff member who was able to donate. Thanks also to the city, Mayor Mike Ebert, Matt Peoples, Linda Tennyson, and Tina Ron for helping to make this happen. Canal Winchester Middle School seventh grade has a tradition of writing children's books for our narrative writing piece. This year, due to COVID, we had to think outside the box. Stories are being written and published digitally through an online resource called Story Jumper, which we've connected with Google Classroom. We are pleased with the success we are seeing so far. And at the high school, Mr. Harmon had originally scheduled a field trip to the wilds out near Zanesville for May 19th with his environmental science class. They were going to watch the animals and make some observations about what they saw. So with that being canceled, they are observing various cameras set up in the wild and observe the animals. 
First assignment was to study any animals around the world. Students were to observe live cameras of animals in the wild, like eagles, gorillas, and sharks. While observing, they had to fill out an ethogram, which is a catalog or table of all the different kinds of behaviors or activities observed in an animal. In their second assignment, they had to observe animals and birds native to Ohio. These cameras are set up near Cuyahoga Falls National Park. One is near several bird feeders, the other in a ground feeder underneath the bird feeders. And lastly, Mr. Widener's video students have continued creating segments for the weekly announcements. Some have recorded themselves making the announcements themselves and others have made fun videos with their smartphones. All righty. That was a bunch. Any, that uh, was a bunch. Any questions from the board? Clarifications? Maybe have nope. her read it again? No? Okay, we're good. Um, Kaya, do we have any uh, public voice out there? We do not. We do not. We will move on to the excitement. Executive reports. Uh, Nick, treasurer's report. Break up. Sometimes I have a uh, issue. I've got my phone here. I can call in. So uh, this is our May update. Uh, the board only really sees uh, November and May uh, forecasts, but this is a every month thing. Uh, the forecast, and it's going to really be even more than that uh, over the next six to twelve months. It's going to be a really a ever changing forecast uh, once we find out new additional. Uh, information from the state revenue and state budget. As many of you know, we recently had cuts for the last two months of this fiscal year. Uh, we're also getting some federal stimulus money. Um, income taxes are, are going to be slashed a little bit from, from unemployment, uh, things like that. So we're going to do our best to uh, make this as accurate as possible. So let's get to the forecast, uh, and then we'll go over the, the smaller details within the biggest piece that everybody always wants to know, uh, where are we cash wise? So line 7.02 cash wise uh, through the five year period with the update, uh, we're still sitting very, very nice. Uh, 34.8 million at the end of the 2024 fiscal year and the five year forecast. Uh, this year is actually projecting better. It's about 500,000 better uh, from a cash standpoint uh, than we uh, had in November, uh, and that's even with the cut in state funding. Uh, and you can see that it's pretty um, glaring once you compare. Year over year. Hey, Nick, you're cutting out on it. Is it? Okay. Let me move and try that. I'll take you on the run. All right, is that any better? Yes. Okay. So the big thing this year, uh, the only impact we're having uh, from revenue is in the state line item. Uh, income tax ended up being up uh, just almost 6%. Uh, property taxes, you can see we're up 200,000. Public uh, utility, personal property was up. Um, the only other thing that we were kind of hit by uh, with school closing with, uh, was other revenues. When you have fees, pay to participate in those things, uh, we came in a little bit under where we were forecasting originally and under where we were last year. Um, so other revenue and state uh, revenue were really the only two line items we didn't hit. Um, from a expenditure standpoint, uh, expenditures were down mainly because in November, uh, I didn't have a few salaries out to federal funds. We had received a little bit more federal funds, so I shifted a couple salaries out to those, which reduced our salaries. Uh, everything else was trending about where the original forecast was. Uh, so you can see we're going to end this year with nearly $3.6 million uh, in access, which will be nice uh, for the next 18 months to 24 months, uh, given that we don't know uh, what's going to happen uh, with the COVID-19 situation. 
uh, projecting out just to kind of give you the high balls. Uh, we're expecting a cut in state funding this year uh, for fiscal 2021. Uh, they said prepare from anywhere from five to 20%. Uh, I put 5% in. I just don't think they're gonna be able to get to the levels of 20% because it would, it would cripple probably 50% of the districts in Ohio. So I just don't see that happening. Um, you can see that we're gonna drop almost a million dollars in state funding. Overall, you can see uh, revenue is going to take a pretty decent hit year over year. We'll probably lose, uh, but we're still maintaining expenditures to a certain uh, degree. Uh, this is our last year of our collective bargaining with our unions uh, for teachers and for uh, maintenance and custodial. Uh, so we'll be heading into that this year. So uh, the last three years of the fiscal year uh, don't have anything CBA wise tied into them other than some base increases and there's normal steps, but we'll be negotiating those things. Um, we were a little bit more aggressive with uh, benefits because we had changed trend after getting out of the SCOIC consortium. Uh, so things were trending much better. So the November, November forecast uh, had benefits of a little bit less. I don't know why I'm not able to move this thing. There we go. So to give you an idea of where things kind of changed in the forecast since November, we're about 343,000 overall in a five year period. So less than a percent um, compared to where we were in November. Um, salaries were reduced uh, significantly uh, due to some moving some of the federal uh, or teachers over to federal money. Uh, the wellness money that we received where we were able to shift salaries over. Um, we had in there about, we were averaging about 17% on health insurance increases. We've reduced that to about 10%. Uh, so that help, helped our benefit line item uh, to the tune of almost 1.2 million. Uh, we're gonna get a little bit more aggressive on supplies. Uh, and you can see the big revenue loss that we're projecting uh, in state funding over the next five years. Uh, obviously, if things get better, the economy gets back to normal, that 5.5 .5 million may look more like two and a half million or three million, but I, I feel like I'm still being in the middle of the ground. I'm not being too aggressive or too conservative. I think I'm trying to hit the middle of the ground with what's actually gonna happen in the state funding. And I think 5% is probably pretty reasonable considering we just got cut two and a half percent for the final two months. So I could see us getting anywhere from two and a half to five percent for a, for an entire year in fiscal 21. So overall still the cash balance is very strong. 34.8 million. Uh, we're going to you can see that we're still net uh, revenue in, in four of the five years. Uh, in the fifth year uh, we, we go into the negative um, but we've got some things uh, that we can reduce without impacting staff, without impacting um, uh, school overall. I think there's some things that we can do uh, just to kind of offset some of the reductions. Um, but I would say we're probably in the top 5% of school districts in Ohio. I know I've talked to a lot of colleagues uh, where they're probably gonna have to cut immediately. They're gonna have to reduce immediately uh, because they just don't have the, uh, the cash that we have. Um, we have the cash that we have because we've been conservative. We've been able to plan. We've had a plan in place. Uh, it's not just a five-year forecast. It's a 10 and 15-year forecast at times uh, that I look at. And once we have a plan, uh, this is why I am, to a certain degree, I am with conservative is because we don't know what the future is going to hold. Uh, and luckily, we're sitting in a position right now to where we are in control of our destiny and not COVID-19. So forecast looks great. If you have any questions, I can definitely get into the, uh, the report, 23 pages, a lot more in detail with you. Uh, but I think the big thing is the cash balance and, and we're gonna continue to be strong um, regardless of what happens to the economy over the next 12 months. Hey, Nick, I have a question. I'll jump in. Um, can you go back up to the other, when you're comparing the five year, what's gonna be, uh, 343,000 yeah. less. 
you have salaries at a minus 3.1 million over the next five years. What, what's wrapped up into there? That was, uh, we moved about five teachers over to federal funding. So I'm assuming we're still going to maintain that. Uh, there was some uh, wellness dollar. We was able to move one or two more people over to wellness. So when you move uh, seven staff over to federal, um, averaging about 80,000 in cost, and you take that over a five-year period, it gets to add up pretty quick. So 3.1 million okay. over five years is only about five, five or six staff that we shifted to federal. Okay. Yeah, that was, that answered it. Thank you. Yep. Board members, any other questions, uh, clarifications for Nick? Just a quick question. I know Nick, uh, you had forecasted a 5%, but you mentioned something about the federal stimulus dollars. Like, is there, do we know exactly what we're going to get as a district? I know you had kind of sent some information out, but do we get any more clarification on that? Or are we still just waiting to see what the federal government decides they want to do? No, we have our amount. Uh, the only thing that's up in the air is the uh, non-public uh, proportion uh, that we have to share. Uh, we got, a, I think it was about 834,000 and I think we're gonna have to share around 135,000 with non-publics that are in our district. So Harvest Prep and now the Learning Spectrum. Um, so we'll still be uh, just right above 700,000. Uh, we were cut by, 535,000, so we're still a net gain. Uh, however, you go from losing uh, general fund money that had no uh, restrictions to receiving some money that has restrictions since it's federal money uh, and it's being into uh, special education or Title I. Uh, we're still gonna be able to offset the loss, uh, but there's gonna be more restrictions on that money than we had. All right, thank you. Plus, I mean, it's going to be hard to forecast costs. I mean, with every entity and every business uh, having to prepare for this. I mean, I, I asked these questions at the very beginning of this um, on things that could impact the district from a liability standpoint, from a workers' compensation standpoint. And the answer was you won't have any impact because it won't be any different than the flu or anything like that. So you're not liable when somebody gets the flu at work. Uh, and as you probably know, those things are, are changing, changing fast. So what kind of costs are we going to have to prepare our buildings and facilities uh, from a, for a safety standpoint, for guests, for employees, for staff, for students? Um, so there's going to be uh, some, some big unknowns from an expense standpoint uh, on what those things uh, are going to require. I know Mr. Bruning's working on a plan. Uh, with, a, with a committee and we'll know soon on exactly what we need to do and, and where we need to go. Uh, but it's gonna be a, a juggling act really for the next few months until uh, we get a better gr grasp on what's happening and what to do. Nick, has the state given us any guidelines on preparing the buildings for future education? No, I haven't received any. I don't know if Mr. Sotler has or not, but I, I haven't really received anything, no. No, Mike, there are just a lot of assumptions out there right now, and I'm, I'm not going to go into anything right now. There's no, uh, no decisions have been made. Hopefully within the next month, we'll have more information, but not at this time. Anybody else? Any questions? John? None at this time. Oh, I thought you were clicking on mute to talk. Okay. Nick, thank you very much. Uh, we will move on to superintendent's report. Well, thank you, Mr. Kruger. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to all, all our viewers out there. It was great hearing these stories from the CWEA and all the positive things that are still going on out there during this online learning. And I just want to take the opportunity uh, to say thank you to all our teaching staff for all that you have done and all you continue to do uh, during this uh, uh, new learning time that we have going out here called e-learning. A good teacher can inspire your hope, ignite the imagination, and is still a love of learning. And our teachers are still doing that, even though we're doing it in a very different manner, and that's virtually with our kids out there. Um, our teachers give our kids hope every single day that leads to love of learning and I hope that gives them the strength to achieve whatever they set out to accomplish, even during this time right now. 
So again, I just want to say thank you to all our teachers out there and all our staff. We're doing everything we possibly can to make this the best experience for our kids. It's not perfect. We know we have some, uh, you know, we got some challenges that we have to overcome, but I think they're doing an outstanding job. And I just want to say thank you to all our staff out there, our, our teachers for still trying to empower all our kids for success. So thank you. Uh, a couple other items. Uh, last week, we completed the majority of the graduation ceremony recordings. I think we have about 10 more to go scheduled for tomorrow night. Once all the recordings have been done, Mr. Widener will splice them together to create one continuous ceremony that we will that will be aired on May 30th at 11 a.m. That's our that was our our normal graduation day. The video will be shown on our YouTube channel for everyone to view and will be out there forever. And we'll have more information on how to log on to our YouTube channel to uh, view the uh, gra graduation ceremony on May 30th at 11 a.m. Under the circumstances, I think everything went as well as it possibly uh, could go. We try, to, we, we try really hard to make it personal for the students and their family and try to make it the best virtual graduation ceremony that we possibly could. Um, like everyone else, we would have preferred the traditional ceremony, but I think we made it uh, close to the real ceremony as we possibly could. At this time, I wanna thank everyone that was involved and there's a plethora of us, so just be patient with me. And if I miss someone, I apologize. But Mr. Henderson, Ms. Bucari, Mr. Lahr, Mrs. Hummel, Hannah Hall, who was a class secretary, who was there every single day reading the names um, of the uh, students. Mr. Widener, who was the videographer who's putting it all together for us. Mr. Phillips, Deputy West, Mrs. Hunt, Mrs. Kruger, and all the other staff members who helped out over the uh, three-day period, and, and including tomorrow. I also want to thank our custodians for making sure that everything looked good and Resili Construction for uh, working with us to make sure it was quiet while we were doing the ceremony uh, during their construction time. This was truly a team effort and everyone played a vital part in the ceremony, whether you were behind the scenes where you were out front of us during those three days. It, it, it couldn't have gone as smooth as it, as it possibly did if it wasn't for everyone that's involved. So once again, thank you to everyone for making this as special as we possibly can for our graduating seniors and their families. I'm looking forward to seeing the final outcome on May 30th, the video. Each student, and I don't think we've said this before, but each student will receive a complimentary eight by 10 graduation photo. Hopefully we're gonna be able to send that home with their diploma. All depends on how quickly HR Imaging can get those photos back to us, but we'll get that out to them as soon as we possibly can. Um, congratulations to our seniors or families, although it's not official till May 30th, but anyway, congratulations. Um, and uh, we, we wish you the best of luck and we, and we hope that, every, that the video turns out uh, very good on May 30th. Any questions or comments about the graduation ceremony? Yeah, I thought it was amazing given the circumstances. Yes, I was impressed with everyone who stepped up to the plate and, you know, we just try to do everything we could to make it personal, make it nice and make everyone feel welcomed, respectful and honored for our students. So any other comments, questions? Yeah, All right, Jim, we, we'll, yeah. Jim, I'm sorry, having a son that graduated, I want to thank everyone else too as well. As, uh, I thought it went under the circumstances, everything went well. Yeah, and we appreciate everything you did. So thank you. And uh, James, uh, can you uh, tell us how many graduates do we have? I believe 299, Mr. Henderson, is that correct? Yes, That's correct, 299. About 299, and, and I think we have uh, 10 more scheduled, and we actually had a few that told us um, they weren't gonna participate, but 299 seniors. Okay, that's wonderful. Yes. The next thing that we're going to do for our seniors, we, we are going to have a senior parade it will take place next Wednesday, May 27th. We're still working out all the details and hopefully by Wednesday we'll have more information for our families about that. Um, it's, there's a lot of logistics. If everyone shows up, that could be 299 cars. Uh, you know, kids have to be in individual vehicles. They, you know, they can't go together. There's a lot of other stuff we're trying to put together. So 
Um, I informed the mayor of the situation. So working with the sheriff's department, we're just trying to figure out all the logistical parts of it. So hopefully by Wednesday, May 27th, we'll have more information out to our uh, families. Any questions on that? All right, uh, construction update. This is you know, one of the positive things of everything that's going on right now is our construction is actually ahead of schedule. And I'm, I'm gonna share a couple pictures with you. Oop. Can everyone see that? Oop. I'm not sure where it went. Yeah, we can see it. Can you see the video of the uh, construction? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what you're looking at right here, well, let's start up here. If you can't tell right in here, this was the old office area. So this is where Mrs. Hummel and Mrs. Uh, Baird sat, right in this area. All those walls are down, and this will become one big student common, uh, learning common area, which is right outside the media center. This is another view from the rotunda. Over here was probably Mr. Lars' office, Ms. Bucari's office. And then back over here, that opening is the opening to the media center. That's actually where Mr. Henderson's office was. So this is now all open. This next slide shows this is where the entrance to the uh, office was coming into the building right here. It is now a brick wall. So the rotunda is right over here. So this whole area is wide open now and will become a student learning commons area. We'll have soft seating in there. We'll have some tables in there for so kids can go and have a different type of learning environment right outside the media center. And we'll stop sharing on this one and hopefully I can bring up a second one. So bear with me here, I'm gonna share this screen. And this right here is the new office. So as you walk into the high school, this is where the old media center uh, was, is now the new office area. And the office area, I believe, uh, we got occupancy of it today. So this is the front desk where Mrs. Hummel and Mrs. Baird will sit. I don't have many other pictures of the back area, but uh, that's what they've been working on. So the construction is going very well at the high school. And I'm very excited to say that we're actually ahead of schedule. So hopefully things will continue to move uh, forward and we'll have the project done sooner rather than later. Any questions, comments about the construction update? Uh, pictures and, are great to see, Jim. That's uh, excited to see the finished product at some point, so. Yes, yeah, it, it, it's pretty interesting to watch it every day. What I'm going to try to do for next board meeting is actually take a video of all the stuff and set of pictures. So maybe get a better feeling of what the actual construction process is. So maybe have a video for the next board meeting. It's exciting. Yep. It's exciting. And to our parents out there, and for information on the end of the year activities or end of the year stuff that, such as picking up your belongings that might have been left in school, please visit our website. I know schools have started that process. I think Indian Trail might have finished that already, but the Winchester Trail, the middle school, high school, they have dates out there. Please visit our website. It will tell you all kind of information about picking up your belongings and dropping off some of the uh, technology back to the school for some of the grade level. So visit our uh, website. Any questions or comments before I move forward? And actually, I'm gonna hand it over to our building principals at this time. We did not have the opportunity to recognize the uh, students of the quarter for the third nine weeks. So we're gonna do that tonight. We're not gonna read everything, but we're at least gonna mention their name and, and the teacher that recognized them. And then we're also gonna do the same thing for the uh, students of the quarter for the fourth nine weeks. So we're gonna start with Indian Trail and the third nine weeks, Mr. Riddle. Yes, thank you. Uh, for kindergarten, we'll start with kindergarten. Out of Mrs. Young's kindergarten class, we have Strada Neo Paney. And out of Mrs. Ford's class, we have Toby Lee. First grade, out of Miss Coe is Penny Smith. And out of Mrs. Spriggs' first grade classroom is Max Winters. Second grade, out of Mrs. Alford is Kirtana Karanth. And out of Ms. Holbert is Brady Martin. Third nine weeks, third quarter. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lolithan from Winchester Trail. 
Yes, good evening. Uh, for quarter three, we'd like to recognize Dristi Tamang from Mrs. Smithers' class. Uh, Mrs. Knack and Mrs. Bittler recognized <laughs> Jackson Ross. From fourth grade, Mrs. Summers recognized Isabella Coe, and Miss Justice recognized Amadou Berry. Uh, and in fifth grade, Miss Morrison and Mr. Reed recognized Nada Addy, and Mrs. Butcher and Miss Miller uh, recognized Anderson Kay for the third quarter. Thank you. That's fantastic. On to the middle school with Mrs. Zipchek. All right, for the quarter three, we have team six three, the team of Dukakis, Walsh, Janey, Brinker, Bridges, and Smith. They are recognizing Daniel McMillan and Claire Speakman. From team seven three, so Mrs. Shirky, Mrs. McCarty, Mr. Payne, Ms. Spout, and Mr. Bocock. They are recognizing Ian Gray, and this name sounds familiar, Ava Rowe. And from team eight three, we have Ms. Rainier, Mrs. Little, Mr. Richards, and Ms. Yike. And they're recognizing Tre sorry, Carlo Trejo and Annie Ron. Awesome. Great job, kids. And high school, third quarter students of the, the third, uh, nine week students of the quarter. Mr. Henderson? Eighth grade um, female, Aromi Mendoza Lopez, Ms. Spotterini. Male, Ryan Franklin, Mr. Ruffing. 10th grade female, Reagan Armstrong, was Mr. Widener. Male was Jacob Cressy, Mr. Harmon. 11th grade, female was Stella Sherwinsky, Mrs. Helser. Male was Noah Cox, Mr. Sodders. 12th grade was Emma Cornett, that was Mrs. Wade. And male was Elijah Bullock, was Miss Botterini. Well, congratulations to all the students for the third quarter student of the quarter. Great job, keep up the good work. Even though we're going into summertime, don't stop learning. And now we're going on to the fourth quarter student of the quarter. We're starting all, all over again with Mr. Riddle. All right, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Young's class, uh, Emma, Emmy Speakman. And out of Mrs. Miller's kindergarten class, we recognize Hank Twiss. Out of Miss Behrman's first grade class, we have Jael Burke. And out of Mrs. Money Penny's, we have Blessed Mwanga. For second grade, out of Mrs. Alford, we have Cameron Caslow, and out of Mrs. Law, we have Campbell Seiler. Great. Congratulations, kids. We're going to Winchester Trail, Mr. Lollathan. Uh, for quarter four in grade three, Mrs. Glanzer recognized Summer Savatora, and Mrs. Lortz recognized Cedric Tinson. In grade four, Miss Justice recognized Jackson Stickney. And Mrs. Summers recognized Justice Chetwood. In grade five, Jeremy Levitt was recognized by Mrs. Rudd, Mrs. Cook, and Mr. Barberry. And lastly, Irene Miffenwango was recognized by Mrs. Butcher and Miss Miller. Thank you. Fantastic. On to the middle school, Mrs. Zipchak. Hey, for sixth grade, Mrs. Linstead is recognizing Julian Brooks, and Miss Siri is recognizing Maddie Frazier. Moving on to seventh grade, Mr. Brennan would like to recognize two students, Matthew Mertz and Kaylin Martino. And from eighth grade, Ms. Bloomfield would like to recognize two students as well, Eli Cassidy and Kendall Rudd. Awesome. And to the high school, Mr. Henderson. Nika Tobin was recognized by Mr. Widener. Mala Kia Black was Mr. Natalie. Janelle Ometa was Mr. Etling. Dewan Wilson, Ms. Jardy. Elena Moore, Mr. Doche, Brett Smithers, Mrs. Schwartz, Priscilla Machin Resto, Mr. Ruffing, and John Boyce was Mr. Barhorst. Again, congratulations to all the students. Um, even though we're going in the summertime, remember learning never stops. Each student will get the certificate and we'll send that home to them in the mail. Uh, we send home the third nine weeks and we'll send home the fourth nine weeks. So again, congratulations to all the students and their families. That is all I have right now. If there are no further questions, thank you very much. And always remember, make it a great day or not. The choice is yours. Mr. Kruger. All righty. Appreciate all that, Mr. Sotler. Any questions or follow-up for Jim? No. no. Okay, great. We're going to move on to uh, district reports. Uh, anyone have any comments or questions for the district reports? None?
Kelly, you want to jump in? Um, I had asked Kelly earlier today about the uh, survey that was sent to the uh, middle school families, and it looked like we had some great responses, um, a lot of participation back on that. And it, uh, Would you uh, like me to good, try and good... pull it up? Well, sure. Okay. Put you on a spot like that. All right, give me one second. There's just some good feedback uh, and, and some good questions. So uh, we are going through that a little bit today. Look at Kelly, how about this? All right. Right on time, huh, Kelly? <laughs> we'll give her a second here. Sorry about that, just another Amazon delivery. <laughs> and I have two dogs, <laughs> many dogs. Um, all right, so I put this together for my staff because we sent out a survey, survey for our families and we had the most recent one was 259 responses. We had more responses the first one, but just um, indicating things that they are struggling with. And I wanted to show my teachers too, all the positives because I was very impressed with how they we're feeling about overall the COVID-19 and the online remote learning. Um, so overall, they felt that we were doing a great job. Teachers seriously need a raise. I added that one in there for them. Um, felt that we were very organized. They liked that we were checking in on families every week. I'm very appreciative of all the surveys. Um, thanks for our dedication. They liked that we were keeping us informed, just the emails I've been sending. And let's see, other things. Now it worked out. I might have messed something up. Sorry about that. Yeah, just move it. Yeah, there tell you what I. Yeah, okay. I like the uh, wish list that they were. This is some good uh, feedback, possibly for mm -hmm. uh, obviously ongoing and may hopefully not next year, but just ongoing on uh, distance learning. Yeah, definitely. They have indicated they want some more teacher-student interaction, and we've noticed too that as we've you know, been through this, you know, obviously longer than the three weeks that were intended. We've had Zoom meetings, but now the students are trying to, um, student attendance has definitely dropped off a little bit. Just are not attending as much as they were at the beginning. Yeah, but yeah, so, but overall they just want things back to normal, like we all do. Yeah, appreciate that, Kelly. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions or want to put anybody else on the spot? Nope. Not okay. this time. Nope. All right. Um, I am going to uh, need a motion as we move on to the consent agenda for that. Uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion. I need a second. Second. Mr. Butler. So I'm going to turn this over to Mrs. Hunt. Thank you. Um, am I on? I, I can't see me to know if I'm off mute. So I'm here. I'm seeing you nod. So I think I'm okay. Great. So we'll start first with the minutes um, from the April 20th board meeting. Number two is our certified personnel. We have several things, several items under this um, subject here. And we are approving a maternity leave request from Melissa Hazel Baker. Um, she has a due date of September 5th. So into next year, we're asking you to accept three resignations, um, Angie Ballinger, Nancy Husky, and Katie Justice. And I would just like to take a moment um, and, and just uh, make mention of Nancy Husky, who has been with us um, for 23, 23 years. Um, she is resigning. Um, um, it's not an official retirement. However, her plan is to travel um, and, and spend some time um, doing new things. So we just want to wish her the best. 
um, and we want to recognize her, her for the 23 years of service to the district. Moving on then, you'll see the teacher recommendations for this year. Um, we are approving several. At this point in time, um, we are hiring, in this board agenda, we will only have one more um, position to hire after tonight. So um, we are, there, it does seem to be a lot. However, over the last um, month, we've done a lot of work um, and interviews at the buildings to, to bring these to you. So we are very excited about um, these hires for next year. And then um, you'll also notice that we are asking you to approve a stipend um, for Nathan Widener. Um, as Mr. Sotler said, he is doing the production of the 2020 virtual graduation video. Moving on to number three for classified personnel. Last month, you approved the contract renewals for um, the certified staff, our teachers, teaching staff. So we are asking you to approve the classified. Um, the majority of these are for two years. And when we get to the bottom there, um, we are asking you to approve three contracts for continuing. Moving on to number four for supplemental personnel. The first one, um, this one was inadvertently left off of the board agendas. So we wanna make sure that we approve Josh Stratton uh, as weight room supervisor for this school year. And then we also have a supplemental for next school year. Um, we would like to ask you to approve Zach Olson as the varsity basketball coach. Um, number five, uh, we contract uh, with Kristen Ankrum as our work-based learning program coordinator. And we're asking you to renew that contract um, for the next two years. And currently um, that contract is being paid from Title IV-A funds. Cell phone reimbursements, this one here, it's something that we do each year. Um, we're asking you to approve the following individuals. They do use their cell phones for work purposes. And so we're asking you to approve $25 per month for reimbursement towards their cell phones. And Nick, I'm going to hand off um, the next couple to you. Uh, this is approving the uh, private tuition uh, for a few students uh, for next year. Uh, some are also extended uh, for this year uh, that are over the 25000 um, <clears throat> The contracts are attached. We don't like to attach uh, the contracts since it has the student's name in it. Uh, so this is all for all private tuition contracts uh, from uh, Ms. Hippler. Uh, Franklin County tax advance. Uh, as you probably are aware, they're going to be delaying uh, the tax settlements uh, for a month or, or longer. Uh, so they're opening up the window to do tax advances once the money comes available. So uh, this is a resolution to authorize myself uh, to get the tax advances uh, once uh, there's money available from Franklin County so we can get the tax money a little bit sooner have we wait uh, until the full collection is completed. So this is the uh, resolution to authorize myself to do that. Um, and then we're gonna designate uh, Mr. Watson, the assistant treasurer. Uh, he's already attended this public records training. Uh, so every even year uh, when new board members come in, uh, we're required to have public records training. Uh, this was the year uh, for that to happen uh, with new uh, members coming in, uh, Mr. Kruger and Mr. Uh, Mr. Butler uh, winning their, their races and then Ms. Talley being appointed. So it was a good year to do the public records. Like I said, he's already done that. Uh, food service contract, uh, we were up on our contract. Uh, we had to go out for bid uh, per ODE. Mr. Watson took care of this. Uh, I think we had three, maybe four bids come in. Uh, the pricing is pretty well the same. Um, Chartwell's does an outstanding job. So we're recommending uh, that they continue to, to do the food service management uh, for the district uh, contract up through fiscal 2021. Uh, lunch prices for 2021 are unchanged. This is, I think, the second year in a row we haven't changed food, uh, food service prices, lunch prices. Mr. Watson can confirm that. Uh, but there's essentially a, a code in law that says if we have a positive cash balance, we can hold lunch prices at the current rates, so we're choosing to do that, especially 
uh, with everything that's happening with, with COVID-19 and, and layoffs and unemployment and things like that. Uh, the last thing we need to do is raise lunch prices for next year. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Any questions uh, before we move to a vote or I'm pleased to see that we uh, have Chris Nankrum uh, back on the schedule. We're going to be approving her. I think that's a, a vital position uh, with what she's doing. And I'm also excited to see uh, Chartwell's back. So Tammy, thank you for your help in uh, moving forward with that as well. Any other questions or anything from the board? Mr. Roberts, will you please call roll? Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. Senate agenda passes 5-0. Thank you very much. We will move on to item G, which are the action items. Uh, I need a motion to approve the uh, five-year forecast uh, with the May update. So moved. I'll second. That was Mr. Unati, and second was Mr. Metzler. Any questions, Nick? Any further comment? Are we good to uh, go? I think we're good to go. All right, please call roll. Mr. Unati? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Motion passes 5-0 on the five-year forecast. Uh, action item number two, I need a motion for the Employee Administrative Contracts 2020-2021, please. So moved. Mrs. Talley? I'll go ahead and second that. And is this uh, Jim, do you have this? Yeah. Yep, I will take this. I am extremely pleased to recommend the following administrators for uh, a three or five year renewal. Uh, they've done outstanding uh, job for Canal Winchester local schools, and I'm just happy that they're staying with us for another three to five years. We have Mike Rich as the assistant maintenance supervisor, uh, Michael Br Dr. Bruning, the director of operations, Deb Fink, the assistant director of curriculum, Brooke Hitler, our director of special ed, Greg Lahr, assistant principal, and Cindy Toledo. Uh, director of curriculum. I'm a, a, a very excited to have them back and with us for another three to five years. Yeah, all, all great to see. Um, Mr. Roberts, please call roll. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. Right, the employment administrative contracts passes 5-0. We're gonna move on to, I believe the one that was added, the purchasing, the uh, action item number three, purchasing of roof and project. I need a motion, please. So moved. So moved. Second. I think it was Mr. Butler and then Mr. Metzler, I believe. Yep. There we go. Uh, who has this, please? I'll take this, is, I don't know if Roger is out there right now. Okay. If, if, if he's not, anyway, this came to us last week. They were doing some work. I believe it's above the cafeteria and the high school. And uh, the roof was pretty much just needed replaced. And so I believe, uh, Nick, there's a 30 year warranty on this roof too. That's included in the price. Yeah, the one that we're doing is 30 years. I think it, uh, it's over the cafeteria and the art hallway, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. When they got in there, the insulation was soaked. Uh, so it was uh, Been leaking for a while. Yeah. So it was definitely in need of an emergency uh, repair. Uh, we already have the uh, company here working on other projects. I, I think it's going to be uh, pretty easy. I think it probably helped the price. Yep. Good to hear. Any questions, board? Nope. Mr. Roberts, please call roll. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. Uh, roofing purchase passes 5-0. We're now going to move to discussion items. We have uh, the first reading for the board policy, and I believe Mrs. Hunt is going to take this one.
You're on mute. There you go. I am. Um, I am. I'm sharing the wrong screen. So I am trying. Thank you for your patience. All right. So um, this is going to be pretty quick. Most of the changes are pretty standard. Um, just going to go through them quick. If there's any questions, please let me know. So for the first set of policies, looking at employment of administrators, employment of professional staff, employment of personnel in summer school and adult education programs, and employment of personnel for co-curricular extracurricular activities. Revisions um, were made for the, from the enactment of the House Bill 491, which is limiting the treasurer's liability regarding confirmation of employee licensure. So in the past, it fell heavily on the treasurer and now it is the responsibility of the superintendent to provide um, the list of licenses to the treasurer before payment. Um, and these revisions do reflect the current Ohio law. 2464 for gifted education and identification. Um, these revisions were from ORC and Ohio, um, OAC, I apologize, regarding the district's plan for gifted education and identification and requires an annual review of the policy. Revisions add emphasis to the requirement to provide an opt out of services for students and addresses required timelines. So nothing changed, just more language that um, stresses the opt out and um, adds in timelines. These revisions do reflect current provisions of state law. Employment of professional classified staff. These revisions were used to replace the reference of highly qualified. So there's no longer the, the language of highly qualified. And again, these reflect the current state of law. Employment of substitutes, policy 31-2004. These revisions reflect the changes made for substitute licenses in Senate Bill 216 um, and in revised code. And these revisions reflect the current Ohio law as well. 4124 changes were made to the employment contract specifically for revisions um, from Senate Bill 216 governing the contract status of non-teaching employees. If you recall, we discussed this um, last year, um, or it might have even been a little more than a year, where our classified employees prior to were given a one-year contract followed by a two-year contract followed by continuing contract. And now this allow it starts with a one-year and then follows by three two-year contracts. So a person cannot receive a continuing contact contract until after being employed by the district for seven years. So these revisions um, do reflect that language. 4162, drug and alcohol testing of CDL license holders and other employees who perform safety sensitive functions. Specific notification and reporting requirements have been added in response to audit recommendations from the Department of Transportation officials. And the revisions do reflect the current federal regulations. Graduation requirements, um, when I met with the policy um, liaisons, the one thing I did stress here is these are changes um, that came prior to the coronavirus um, and the COVID with the cancellation of the assessments this spring. So I do suspect that we will have more changes um, that will be coming to graduation requirements. However, these are changes that were made um, and put into place for the class of 2023 and beyond. 5460.02, students at risk of not qualifying for a high school diploma. Um, this is a new policy in response to House Bill 166, and it is consistent with current guidance from ODE. The policy reflects the requirements of state law. And 6107, authorization to accept and distribute electronic records and to use electronic signatures. These revisions recognize and authorizes the use of electronic signatures and electronic records for the broader range of applications and transactions that are part of the school business function. Um, so the ones listed above all came from NEOLA, the recommendations from NEOLA. Um, moving on, 
there is also updates that came or recommendations that came from NEOLA regarding COVID-19. I will say that they just wanted us to review them. Um, the policies had not been updated or revised or reviewed since 2006. So the recommendation was to go ahead and review them. Um, we did not make any changes to them and we are meeting you know, the, the language under the policies but those two for pandemics and other medical emergencies and the control of casual contact, communicable diseases, um, we're not changed. We're just um, noting that we are reviewing them. And last, but certainly not least, um, is policy 1415-4415, which is severance pay. And these revisions increase the payout for the maximum number of unused sick leave from 45 to 50 total days. Two year, or the first year of the negotiated agreement, which we're currently in the second of a three year, we made these changes and we are just updating policy to reflect those changes that were made in a couple years ago. So current practice, we're just updating the policy on that one. And if, as long as everybody's still awake after that, um, I'll take any questions. No so questions I, here. I just want to comment, Kaya, we thank you very much because this is quite a, the policy is quite a complicated uh, can of worms at times. And so uh, I understand how hard it is. Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to work with John and Kevin as well um, with policy. So I appreciate it, Mike. I'm very pleased you're working with John and Kevin as well. So <laughs> thank you. We, we look forward to uh, proving these uh, at the second reading next month. So thank you, Kaya. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, no need to go into an executive session, do we, Mr. Sotler? No, no executive session tonight. All right. Um, any questions from the crowd or are we good to go? All righty. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this uh, school board meeting tonight on Zoom. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next month. But, oh, but you got to take call. Matt, you yeah. got to vote to you, you adjourn. Gotta, forgot about that. It's ready to roll out. I need a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.14 p.m. So moved. Second. Mr. Metzler, second. Mrs. Talley. Uh, Mr. Roberts, please call roll. Mr. Metzler. Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Now we'll see everybody next month. Thank you. Yeah. Good night, all. Bye. Good night, guys. Bye. <laughs>